All right, guys, uh, this is Tim from Real Website Hints, and I want to show you quickly how I optimize images for the Internet. Now, it's really important uh, when you're building your website that you want to have your images optimized. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is that you want to basically have the bare minimum file size of the image uploaded to your website. And what that's going to do is going to allow you to have a much faster load time from your pages than if you just put up the full size images on your website. And the truth is, most people out there um, on the internet using their devices, they're either on a mobile phone, a tablet, or a computer, and chances are they don't have a computer that's got a very high resolution. So they're not going to be able to get the ability to look at, you know, like a giant 4K image, for example, um, that you might have. So you just want to keep your images small. At the same time, of course, you want to keep it looking good. And so the way I like to do this um, is I use Photoshop. It does unfortunately cost money and I've been looking for another solution that works as well and as easily and as, as easy to understand as the tools for optimizing images in Photoshop but I haven't found anything. I would definitely love to hear about anything that you guys might be using out there to optimize your images um, but I think that this is uh, the best way and the easiest way to understand. So let's go ahead and get started with this quick tutorial. So what I've got here is I've got my um, website folder that I've talked to you guys about in my tutorial on how to make a website and I've got my raw images file so you can see here a lot of these images are huge and as a matter of fact the one that we're going to use is this uh, sunset surfer that I got from Unsplash it's 6.1 megabytes which is ginormous when it comes to the size of your website you really want to have that down to you know probably no more than 120 kilobytes something like that so really a lot smaller than this. So let's go ahead and let's just drop this into Photoshop or you could open it in Photoshop either way. Okay, so we've got our image here and what I like about this image, especially if you're using it for a background image, is that we've got the main focus of our image right in the center and then we've got a lot of space on the top and on the bottom where we can easily add text on our website. And the reason why I like to have the image in the center is that it just makes it super easy for optimizing your the look of your website for multiple different devices because by default the center of the image is going to be where is going to remain the focus um, no matter what size uh, screen you have and if you watch my how to make a home page tutorial you can see me demonstrate that but I just wanted to share with you and that's one reason why I'm, I'm selecting this image here now, of course, of course, Photoshop lets you do a lot of amazing things, and to be quite honest with you guys, I am not a Photoshop expert. I actually think it's extremely uh, difficult to use. I use it when I have to. Uh, there's some things that you know Photoshop is the best at. Uh, this one tool, the sort of getting your images ready for the web, is a tool that I really like in Photoshop. And so to get started with this, what you want to do is you want to go up to File, go to Export, and then Save as Web Legacy. Okay, so here we are. We have it opened up, and as you can see, this is actually the image here. If you scroll around it, you can see what's going on is it's way, way, way zoomed in, and that's because this image is just ginormous. It's a huge image. This right down here, you can see this. It's got the compression that we're using, and then it's got the file size. And it's also even telling us in um, 56 kilobits uh, in you know, sort of old dial-up um, how long it's going to take to load this. And I believe you can change this here. To, let's see, we're so we change it to cable modem. It's going to tell you that this image, if you just left it alone and you didn't do anything, so I just said this to cable modem, so one megabits per second, would take 277 seconds to download. And that's just one element on your website if it's a background image. So that's why it's really important to make these adjustments. So we've got everything that we need to know about our image right here. We've got the size, and you can set this here to, you know, cable modem, and you can see how long it's going to take to download just this one element of our website. So the first thing we want to look at is the preset for the compression. So right now it's set to PNG24, and if you have like a graphic um, with a transparency or just a graphic, you're going to want to use that. Uh, PNG generally, I would try PNG24 or PNG8 if there aren't very many colors in it. But for this, what I'd recommend doing is starting out with JPEG. So let's start out with JPEG medium. So it's a medium amount of compression or a medium resolution that it's going to render it to versus high, which is going to sort of give you the maximum amount of, of quality. But generally, I'll find that you really won't notice the difference, especially when we make the image size itself smaller. You really won't notice that much of a difference between high and medium. 
and definitely not enough that if it's a background image that it's really going to affect uh, your viewer's experience. So let's go ahead and set this to medium. And immediately we can see it made a giant difference in the size of the image file. Now it's only 1.1 megabytes or so. It's only going to take 13 seconds to load. So that's, that's great. That's a huge improvement, but still that's going to take too long. So the next thing to do is to change the size. So I like to change the width to, you know, somewhere around 1200. Let's try 1440, which is definitely overkill. That's bigger than it needs to be. But let's just go ahead and set it to 1440 because you know, that will definitely be sort of overkill. And you can see here in this preview screen, whoa, um, it's still a very, very large image, probably actually bigger than we need. Um, and it didn't bring the file size down quite enough. I would definitely shoot for something around 50 or 60 here for a larger image. And then, of course, you know, even less if possible. Um, and if, when you think about it, most people's screens apparently are actually only 1024 on average for a desktop computer screen. I think I would err on the side of a little bit larger than that, just so that you don't have to worry about changing this image later on. So let's go with, um, let's just go with 1100 on this. Okay, there we go. I think that's actually a pretty good size here. Now we're down to just 62 kilobytes. Much better load time. And what we can also do is we've got the quality up here, so we can sort of play with this quality slider. And you can see, and this is why I really like this tool, you can see in real time the effect that that's having on both the image quality and on the file size. 17 is definitely a little bit too low. Let's try 24. 24 is not bad. If we bump it up, 59. I mean, that looks really good. It's really crisp. I don't know if you guys can see that in the video or not. But again, we're trying to... We're using this as a background image, so probably you know, maximum quality is not that important, and we also want it to load as quickly as we can. And one reason why I love this tool so much is that you can just play around with the slider and play around with all the settings, and you can see what's happening to the image in real time. You don't have to just have these uh, items memorized in your in your mind. And so I think since I want I do want uh, to keep this under 60, I'm just going to roll this slider down until I just get it just under 60, so at 28, a quality of 28, I'm going to go with that. You can still see what the image is, it's still uh, clear enough, so you can see it's a surfer, you can see a wave, you can see all of the colors, it generally looks good. And then the next thing to do is just save it. And what I like to do is just uh, save this image, and I like to save it in my optimized image folder, and that way I already know that I've already looked at it, I've made an optimized version of it, um, and sort of done the best I can with that, and it's ready to be used on my website. So I'm putting it in my optimized image folder, and I'm just going to click Save. And so there we go. That's a quick tip, and I definitely recommend that you do this with all the images and graphics. You want to make sure that you've got the smallest file size possible to make your website and your web page load faster. It's really important for search engine optimization. It's important for the consideration of your viewers, that they're not sitting there uh, loading a really big website. Because the truth is, most people, if it starts loading and it starts taking too long and lagging, they're just going to leave and they're going to go and see something else. So this is something that's really important to do, um, and it's another uh, quick tip. For more quick tips, you can visit me at realwebsitehints.com or check out some of my other YouTube videos. Thanks for watching.